Hello. Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Joe. I'm a software engineer and the developer and creator of the Bitcoin phone. I'm here to talk to you today about voice over Bitcoin protocol, which is pretty cool. So I want to take you back in time for a second, back in time, uh, to the early internet. So back then, people connected to the internet through the telephone network and used a modem to transfer internet packets. So if you told someone back then, and this was a commonly debated topic, I'm going to do a voice call over the internet, they'd look at you a bit funny. And the reason for that is because you're essentially telling them that I'm going to take an IP packet, I'm going to turn it into audio, and I'm going to play it through the telephone, and someone else is going to decode that and play it out through their speakers. They tell you, just pick up the phone and call somebody. Nowadays, we have better connection to the internet, we have a dedicated line, most cases fiber, and we're able to do more things than just audio. We can do video, we can do text, and you do this all the time. You do this when you do Facebook Messenger, Telegram, WhatsApp, and whatever. So today we have a similar situation with the Bitcoin network. When you connect to the Bitcoin network, you use the internet. So you have this tightly uh, knitted network of miners. They're all connected to each other. And you connect to them via the internet. Now, if you told someone, and this is what happened, uh, especially on Reddit, uh, we told them that we're doing audio on Bitcoin. They said, you're crazy. No one wants to do that. It's nuts. But we project that in the future, uh, because of incentives due to things like orphan risk and uh, transaction volume, these miners will invest in these lines and they become faster, stronger, lower latency and higher bandwidth. And not necessarily the case that we replace the lines to the miners, but we can use the same piping and infrastructure that we use for the internet and to send internet packets in order to send Bitcoin transactions. Now this is a future that we're betting on uh, with the Bitcoin phone. So finally, what is the Bitcoin phone? The Bitcoin phone, as we call it, is the most efficient way to find and pay anyone on the globe with an internet connection for any online service. Now, uh, here's a quick GIF of our UI. Uh, you can call people, you can pay for them, you can set the rate, whatever you want. What you're doing is you're taking your uh, audio data and you're taking your money, you're putting it into a Bitcoin packet and you're pushing it into the network. And by doing so, anyone on the network can potentially listen in, decrypt your data if they have the appropriate keys and uh, listen to the audio that you're sending. And your peer will do the exact same in reverse. Now, what does this efficiency enable? Uh, this is something that we need to really get down to because this is the end. And that is, we can auction off people's time. We can have a use case where maybe it's the case that you know, your time is very valuable in the morning compared to the afternoon. Uh, we'll have the lowest possible fees. So this brings me to my uh, sort of business side of the presentation. We're really targeting the tutoring and uh, language learning services. And these are both six and $13 billion industries, and we're attempting to disrupt them. So nowadays, if you want to hire a tutor, and if you want to hire someone to help you learn a language, uh, the platform that you do it on will charge somewhere between 15 and 30% in fees. But we're able to bring that down to almost peanuts, and we're able to do that because of BSV. And the best part is, Anyone, anywhere can teach a language or a skill without needing Bitcoin, right? The only people that need Bitcoin are the people that are buying stuff. And this is great because imagine you're someone in a more developing country like Haiti and you know French, right? And there's someone here in America who also knows French. Both of those people seem as like equally good French tutors, but it's the case right now that it's really, really difficult to hire that person from Haiti. And maybe they don't want to charge as much as the person from America. So it makes a lot of sense for you as the customer to choose the person from Haiti. And we want to be able to connect you to that person and allow them to take your money in exchange for tutoring services. So why BSV? As we said before, this is the cheapest and most efficient way to do transactions. And no other blockchain, uh, as we know, can support this at scale. 
and no other Bitcoin is cheap enough to support this. We thought about using Lightning, but it was a mess because we'd have to hop through six or seven different people, and half the time it may not even work. And we're also limited by the bandwidth of the smallest connection in that Lightning path. So, on a technical level, how does the Bitcoin phone work? Well, we use NSequence, which is part of the original Nakamoto payment channels, and we update transactions uh, to have different types of outputs. And each different output is a different section of the audio data captured by your computer's microphone. So every 100 milliseconds, we create a new transaction, we update the sequence number, and we change the output. Um, so we broadcast this into the network, all the nodes get these transactions, and using Bloom filters, um, one of the nodes that has your friend attached to it, uh, will subscribe and receive those transactions, download them, and play the audio through their speakers. And lastly, this is a very important note because a lot of people, especially on Twitter, did not understand this. Only the final transaction is stored on chain. There's no need to store every single transaction on chain. There might be some specific use cases, but we're not interested in that. We're interested in trading audio data for money. So this is our packet structure. It looks very similar to an IP packet. You have a source address, you have a destination address, but these are Bitcoin addresses. They're not IP addresses. And they send change and payment to the people you want to send them to. And lastly, there's a payload that contains the audio data that we're sending. This is a very abstract view of one. Um, so how do we make money, right? So <laughs> this is how we generate revenue. And the thing is, when we were testing this at first, the biggest issue we had was latency. Uh, broadcasting into the network took a long, long time. And if you want to broadcast something through the network, it takes somewhere between uh, 150 to 300 milliseconds. And a lot of this has to do with safeguards that nodes put in place uh, to prevent transaction flooding and whatnot. So the Bitcoin phone relay is essentially an interface to the network that is a high-speed interface that allows you to just propagate transactions through this interface to whoever else you want. We still connect to the network. If you don't want to use our interface, you don't have to. You can connect directly to the Bitcoin network and still talk to people that use the Bitcoin phone relay. Uh, and this is how we make money. It's very simple. It's just one extra output to us as a service fee. Um, and over time, uh, we think that other people will do the same thing. And eventually, we don't want to get into the mining business, but eventually miners will offer this service as well, hopefully. Uh, the second part of our more long-term revenue generation strategy is identity verification. So with the Bitcoin phone, there's a very, very direct incentive to verify your identity. If you're someone who wants to offer counseling services, you need to prove that you have a master's in psychology. If you're someone that wants to teach French, uh, some customers might prefer if you have a degree in French literature. Um, but with the Bitcoin phone, with the Bitcoin phone company specifically, we can offer the services to verify that you have those specific skills. And lastly, this is the most important thing, we can settle disputes super easily. So imagine you hired someone to teach you Russian or German, and then when you showed up, they didn't show up, right? If that's the case, either one of two things happen. If they didn't show up, that means, okay, uh, no money was exchanged, in which case no harm, no foul, or they showed up and they just sat there and they didn't teach you anything. If that's the case, what happened is with the Bitcoin phone software, we have a list of all the signed transactions and they've gone through the network, we just need to store the transaction IDs and you can give us a signed list of all these transactions, they're all signed by the person who sent them, so they basically signed a video confession of them not showing up and not teaching you anything. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the services we offer. That's how we generate revenue, and that's the Bitcoin phone. And we just want to say that to anyone out there, no matter who you are, if you are alive, you have something you can offer to the world and sell to other people, and we want to help you do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to have you go towards the front of the stage a little bit more. Look at our fine judges. All right, judges, who's got a question? You want to start with Donnie again? Can you own Bitcoin phone? Is that, I guess that's my, my question. Is the it, name? Yes, I mean, because it, it seems to me that it's, 
like, it'd be one thing if it was built around the tutoring name, but the phone concept, is that something that is patentable and ownable? Uh, the phone concept? No, the, the phrase Bitcoin phone. The phrase, uh, like a trademark? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can, I'm just coming in from the outside world. Is that something that can be ownable? Because it's, it's, you're talking about Bitcoin and phone is just, is a... Is yeah, you might be able to trademark uh, Bitcoin phone, like there's Vodafone and other kinds of phone, right? So it's possible in, in that regard. If you're talking about the application, uh, we, we own that, right? Uh, and why did you choose on uh, tutoring and, and language specifically? I'm not saying that's not a good market, but you could have gone to so many different verticals. Why did you go there? That's a great question. So the reason we did that is because anyone around the world, um, especially like students, they have the skills to teach language and uh, offer tutoring. So it's like we're making this more inclusive to more people around the world. Uh, that, that's mainly it. If we did uh, telehealth or medicine, which is poten a potential avenue in the future, um, we would have to verify that everyone's a licensed like, doctor and whatnot. And who knows what kind of regulations there are around giving medical advice. Uh, so these two specific markets are one where anyone can participate. And there are people, like students, who are heavily invested in their education. Uh, they want tutors. And yeah, and there's a lot of market inefficiency in tutoring in general. Craig. Uh, why don't you integrate a peer discovery protocol so that you can then have a direct peer-to-peer -peer link and um, um, continue outside using SPV uh, and just update the, the thing uh, as question one? And question two, uh, what about things like um, only fans? <laughs> uh, so for question one, um, so are you referring to like making a direct UDP connection? Yes. Okay, so the main reason we didn't choose that route, um, we, have, we have multiple reasons. Um, the first one is it's really hard to do NAT. So it's really hard to do peer-to-peer -peer connections uh, properly uh, in the normal space. Uh, it, today, technologies like WebRTC allow you to do that seemingly, but in a lot of cases, they fall back to turn servers. So uh, with NAT, it's really hard to do that, but in some cases, it's not even possible. Like, there are certain types of networks that won't let you uh, do UDP hole punching. Um, they'll have a different IP port combination for different kinds of uh, destination addresses. So we can't figure out this port mapping to send to our uh, other person. The, the second reason is because by using a relay server, we can take advantage of the very, very fast connections and the ISP deals that cloud computing has to offer. So all these big companies like AWS, GCP, Azure, they have these very, very sophisticated deals with ISPs, and they offer very, very fast connections to our end users. And by using a relay server, we can take advantage of that. Now let's get to OnlyFans. Oh, and OnlyFans. I forgot about that. Yeah, we don't want to get into the pornography business. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pornography, Joe. <laughs> All right, Paul, any questions? <laughs> yeah, just a quick one related to Donnie's question, sort of further down um, on the concept of uh, tutoring. Ha have you taken it far enough that you've talked to any you know, sort of potential customers to sample it, give it a shot, see if this kind of thing it has a real market? No, we haven't uh, built it out far enough for, uh, for that to happen. Yeah. Steve? I'm actually really interested in the tutoring part as well. So my question's more of a request is uh, when, when you do launch this, can you launch it in Switzerland because I need a language tutor uh, uh, over there. <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think that's actually a, a really great angle. I was struggling at first to understand what the market was for paying for a phone call mm -hmm. uh, right now, but I, I think you, you kind of nailed it uh, uh, with that, that specific use case. Um, a quick question is the is about the the relay server and uh, and peer channels. They they appear to solve kind of similar problems. Is the relay server making use of, of peer channels, or is it a, a standalone product? Um, at the moment, it's just a standalone. Speaks Bitcoin transaction, pushes Bitcoin transaction out. Like Bitcoin transactions come in, we process them, we yep. spit Bitcoin transactions out. Uh, we, we wanted to make it as fast, as efficient as possible yep. uh, for our end customers. All right. Let's wrap this up. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe.